I'm Thomas Hall, Executive Director of Clean Start, and I'd like to welcome Ken Hayes, Executive Director of Clean Tech Open. He specializes in strategic business development, corporate development, revenue generation, digital marketing strategy, and startup finance. Ken has been an entrepreneur and built and sold his companies. In 2014, he became a venture partner and co-founder of the early stage venture capital fund, Canyon Creek Capital. And he's also a member of the Pasadena Angels. Since 2017, Ken has focused his efforts at, to impact hundreds of entrepreneurs and startups by running uh, the Clean Tech Open, which we're gonna hear about right now. And uh, his personal mission is to help entrepreneurs make the world a better place and become financially successful. That's always the key. Um, he's been around the block a few times, but loves the journey and the results. Please welcome Ken Hayes of the Clean Tech Open. Well, thank you so much, uh, Thomas, and also Gary. It's uh, great to be back here with Clean Start, and we appreciate uh, the the partnership that we have uh, in California. With me on the call as well is Ryan Hoover, who is the operations manager for Clean Tech Open West, with a focus on essentially the West Coast. And so if any of you have questions about uh, the program, Ryan is uh, the other go-to guy besides, uh, besides myself. So the, the purpose of Clean Tech Open, our mission is to really define, fund, and foster entrepreneurs that have big ideas that address kind of the most urgent energy, environmental, economic challenges that we face. And what I like to say, and this is partly related to my personal mission, is we try to create success for the environment and success for business. You know, through for many years, you could be a hardcore business person or you could be a hardcore environmentalist, and those two were at odds with each other. But the truth is, um, nowadays, it's actually possible to do both together. And those are the kinds of companies and entrepreneurs that we want to foster and encourage. So we are the, the world's largest clean technology accelerator. Uh, we are a non, we're part of a nonprofit 501c3, and we do not take equity in uh, the companies for going through the, the accelerator. So, you know, those of you out there that, that are uh, entrepreneurs, um, you know, keep this in mind as you're considering what are the next steps for your company's journey and uh, what you can get out of it and who you might want to work with. We've been around since 2005, started in California and Massachusetts, and we accelerate about 120 companies a year and are supported by about 1,000 volunteers all around the United States. And Thomas mentioned a more in-person events for the last two years. We we kind of took the bull by the horns in the early pandemic and decided to run the whole program online. It actually worked out great for two years. And so we're going to continue running the core program online, and um, but we're adding in in-person events like think of mixers and uh, site visits, and we'll have our global forum event in San Jose in October. We're expecting about five thousand people to that, uh, co-located with Verge. So you know, we're all organizations. We're all trying to figure out like how to get past this pandemic. Um, for us, the online actually worked out really well because it meant we can serve companies from anywhere in the country, no matter how remote or um, or mobile they might be. So we are a business accelerator, and we we're not helping companies develop technology. We work with entrepreneurs that have a technology but are trying to figure out how to build a better business. And a, and a foundation to their business. So we work with companies early in their early in their life cycle. It's the early stage. It's where a company may have a they're looking to do a pilot um, or proof of concept type uh, projects, and they're getting ready to seek uh, seed funding, maybe from angels or even even a bridge round. So think of uh, companies that come out of the university and have a technology, but not a business at all. Maybe they went through an i program, something like that. And before they would get into production and scaling it up, that, that's where Clean Tech Open really helps out at that early, early stage. And we define Clean Tech quite broadly. You'll hear terms like climate tech, circular economy, smart cities, um, green tech, clean tech, climate tech, Really, it's all part of the same overall uh, field, which is any environmental technology that is, uh, that is uh, reducing usage or improving quality of life. And uh, it generally falls within energy, green buildings, transportation, um, ag tech. By the way, ag tech is, uh, one of our, is our fastest growing sector these days. And that's really relevant for, the, for Central California. 
um, chemicals, advanced materials, and information and communication technologies. And quite frankly, most companies now check off multiple of these sectors when they're going through clean tech open. Think of solar powered uh, water purification, things like that. Um, so again, you know, we're very much of a big tent type accelerator that can handle companies that uh, are within any of these technologies. And to be frank, about 85% of the companies that go through are hardware based technologies. So we do have some consumer apps. The truth is there's a lot of accelerators that can handle consumer apps and SaaS platforms. We're focused on entrepreneurs that have created hard technology and they have to figure out how to actually make a business around that. So the key activities in clean tech open really fall into several, several categories um, in terms of going through the accelerator. And I'll, I'll give an example of kind of the overall timeline, but um, uh, it primarily involves training where we have a two and a half day national academy. We have uh, webinars and workshops and business clinics, practice judging sessions, kind of uh, uh, where we help level up the skills of the entrepreneurs. And we do that by matching entrepreneurs to mentors uh, who are both local and international mentors. They can be gen business generalists, they can be specialists, and we match them together. And the mentors are kind of like your Sherpa through the program. And I'll, I'll explain more about that later. The third big element kind of going around here is the showcasing where we make sure that all of the companies in our cohort um, get a lot of exposure, both online, social media. We have 25,000 newsletter recipients um, nationally. We um, hold events like the Global Forum uh, in October. We really want to make sure all of the companies going through our program get broad exposure nationally. So let's say if you're a company in the Central Valley area and you're working with Clean Start on a kind of an ongoing relationship basis, which is fantastic, really good relationships within the California area, we're distinction with Clean Tech Open is we're a little more of a window on the world and the access to experts and customers and stuff outside of California. And um, that's absolutely complementary with each other. We're not trying to get companies to move or trying to get them access to relevant contacts all around, uh, all around the country. And then finally, the result of the showcasing is access to capital. It's important to know Clean Tech Open by itself is not a fund. We're not putting money into the companies. We're helping entrepreneurs get in front of investors, corporate VCs, uh, the national labs are doing uh, grant making, uh, large grants, things like that. So we really want, and we have a great network of, uh, of VCs and investors. We have a big event coming up here in March for our alumni. Um, so we hold these events we call Investor Connect, where we match make entrepreneurs with, uh, with uh, funders. Last October, we did a three-day event. We organized 900 introductions and, and organized 700 meetings. These are like 12-minute meetings between entrepreneurs and investors. I mean, 700, Ryan was on that call. It was, uh, it was wild in Zoom with uh, 35 breakout rooms, things like that. Very successful, very successful events. So, you know, everything we do is to help uh, entrepreneurs make their business more successful. And that happens through these three areas of, uh, you know, gaining insight about your company, um, a focused program where you're kind of go through a structured program um, and we gear it to, to what you need, what an entrepreneur needs, but it's very focused and it's very time limited. Uh, it starts in June, ends in, at the end of August, and then we have a competition season uh, in September, October. But within a very short time, relatively speaking, entrepreneurs get build evidence and, and a good business case uh, for their company and can, um, uh, and can really answer the questions that determine is their company viable. And all that leads to opportunities to get exposure globally, nationally to industry experts, the other alumni, investors, et cetera. So what do startups create? Uh, we call them the eight essential business deliverables. This is really the work product. I'm not gonna go into it too deeply, except to say that all of these things, whether it's an intro video or a one-page executive summary or pitch deck, an entrepreneur is gonna need all of these for pretty much any 
funding initiative. And uh, these become living documents and the entrepreneurs that go through our program gain the skills to kind of up to not just create these things, but also revise them along the way, keep them updated and uh, make sure that uh, they're always relevant when they get the opportunities to, to pitch. I mentioned that the program starts in June, goes through August, that we do everything on kind of a weekly basis. We call them the weekly modules. You can see the 10 of the 10 modules here over on the right hand side, it's essentially one module per week that you that an entrepreneur focuses on together with their mentor to kind of work through it. And, uh, you know, Clean Tech Open, having been around since 2005, it's kind of we refined and developed this model and it works really, really well. There's a very intentional order to to these modules and how things are done. And um, and uh, we've learned that. Uh, that, you know, this works most effectively for the, uh, for the entrepreneurs. I mentioned Clean Tech Open in terms of the window on the world. And, and this is an example of the different kinds of organizations that we work with. Um, we have hundreds of partners across the country. We have about 40 to 50 national level partners, including the national labs, uh, large VCs, uh, corporate sponsors and partners. And, um, and uh, we're very open in terms of making those, those kinds of introductions. Just as uh, we are considered a feeder into the commercialization ecosystem. So commercialization is the stage after Clean Tech Open. And we're a part of a number of networks, for example, the Incubate Energy Network uh, that includes uh, Lacey in Los Angeles, Elemental Accelerated Silicon Valley, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we're part of the California Energy Commission's support and, and, and I think um, Clean Start through Blue Tech Valley and those activities in the, in the Central Valley are also a part of that network. So, you know, there's a large ecosystem out there. It's challenging as an entrepreneur to kind of navigate who to work with and maybe in what order. And going through Clean Tech Open is part of that discovery process to figure out what would be most relevant for the company. I mentioned the uh, mentoring. Mentoring consistently is the highest rated part uh, element of our program, which is matching where we match mentors uh, who are either business generalists or technical or functional specialists to an entrepreneur and they help guide you through the program. It's important to know that the mentors don't, are, they're not consultants. They're not doing the work for you and nor are they allowed to sell you their services. They're doing this at, as volunteers and you're not obligated to pay them. Uh, you might buy them lunch or coffee, something like that. But uh, but uh, they're not they're not here to find jobs. They're here to help entrepreneurs. And we assign one, two, sometimes three mentors to a team, and they kind of help the team go through the program and also impart their wisdom and their experience uh, to to you. Finally, I'll note about the mentors. We match mentors both locally and nationally and remote. So we strive to have mentors matched that would be geographically close to the entrepreneur, but we're also looking for additional mentors that would be the absolute best match for that entrepreneur, no matter where the entrepreneur is based and no matter where the mentor is based. And nowadays with FaceTime, Zoom, WhatsApp, whatever, you know, it's possible to do, do these kinds of meetings and coaching in the course of the program. I wanted to mention some alumni of Clean Tech Open, and we have a hashtag called uh, uh, CTO Alumni Success. You can go to LinkedIn, you can go to Twitter, and you can see real examples of uh, and current examples of alumni that are succeeding. And you know, we love to take credit for them, but the reality is, it's those entrepreneurs are working really, really hard, and uh, we're very proud when they. Uh, uh, send us some uh, some kudos and appreciate the fact that Clean Tech Open played a, a significant role in their development. But examples like Block Power, which is retrofitting uh, heating and cooling systems in urban buildings, you know, just raised uh, $63 million here about a year ago. Uh, Lilac Solutions here in uh, in the Salton Sea in Southern California, it's raised, um, you know, 170 some million dollars. Uh, Clear Flame, um, go down here, long haul trucking uh, efficiency, engine efficiency. They started out as a student team 
went through the National Science Foundation kind of i program, um, and they've ended up raising, they went through Cleantech Open in 2017, they've ended up raising a significant, really significant round. So we like to see the progression of, of companies raising. And I pulled out, uh, and Thomas may, may say a couple of words about these companies, but I pulled out some of the companies uh, that are part of the Clean Start Network that have also gone through Clean Tech Open and, and you know, they find a good home to continue relationships with the, with the regional network, um, even after having finished Clean Tech Open. Um, yeah, we've had, there's been a couple more companies than that, but one of the things that is, I think, most important for these companies to get is the connections and the network so that they can move um, beyond where they are. One thing um, prior to this, I was talking about with Ken Hayes is all these companies, they learn to pivot and they learn to um, find, you know, their niche and their addressable market, which makes, you know, which makes their individual success last much longer. Gary, do you have any, any, any companies that come to mind for you? Well, I mean, we've, we've got um, um, Tony Jones, um, that, that deals with water. I think he's been in the ag and, and water tech, uh, segment in it, but I, I think what's good for people is the tight connection between those in Cal seed and those in CTO. There's a lot of, of, uh, feedback, um, between the two, uh, we of course have EV life and now they're up for, uh, Kings capitalize, uh, potential award. So I think when we've looked at this before, there's there's eight companies that have been participating, either in Cal Seed or or in in CTO, and that's just within the last three four years, um, and the the participation seems to be increasing. So it's a it's a great opportunity uh, for people, and the connections are something that that's just invaluable. So um, you know, encourage people to get uh, involved in that. Yeah, you know that's a, that's a great point, Gary. Thank you for mentioning CalSeed. Uh, CalSeed is a program funded by the California Energy Commission to um, actually put cash dollars into startups. They have a competitive phase to determine who gets uh, first. It's one hundred fifty thousand dollars, and then those companies are required to go through Clean Tech Open. And at the end of Clean Tech Open, they um, apply and pitch for the prototype grants, which are another four hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars for the companies. So um, and and CalSeed con con contracts with CleanTech Open to level up those entrepreneurs and get them ready for those uh, for those awards uh, or for competing for those uh, those awards. So this is why so many companies that go through CleanTech Open in the West uh, are part of the CalSeed uh, program. I, I wanted to give a, a kind of a colorful example of a, of a clean tech open alum. This was a spark charge and that's actually a, a Northeast company. I actually am sitting in Boston right now. I took the red eye last night and I'm oh, going from a little conference room in Greentown labs and uh, Joshua Aviv is going to be speaking tonight in an, uh, at an event uh, that we are putting on uh, here in, in, in our Northeast region. Um, they were on the season premiere of Shark Tank, and I'll be darned if they didn't win a, a million dollar funding from uh, Lori Greiner and Mark Cuban. But, you know, people, do, the general population doesn't think a lot about clean tech or climate tech. And it's great when, uh, when one of our companies actually gets on national TV and is successful. So that's always, that's always really cool. We are mindful of the impact that Clean Tech Open uh, has. Uh, we did a, a, a deep survey in the Northeast and we're doing one comparable one in, in the rest of the country as well to find out what percentage of companies are still in existence. And in the Northeast, 68% of the companies that went through Clean Tech Open are still in existence, um, generating $279 million of revenue and raised $650 million of equity uh, funding. So that's actually really impressive. And those numbers are higher than the national averages for, uh, for entrepreneurship in general. And we're also on a real strong move uh, effort to make sure that the teams, the entrepreneurial teams are diverse. Um, and so in this study, um, you can see over the, over the last several years, the increase of 
um, women and people of color on the executive teams in, uh, in the startups going through Cleantech Open now up to about over 60%. And eventually that's going to get to 100%. Um, we have, uh, uh, you know, where every team in a company should have uh, a, a significant degree of diversity. We are a nonprofit, as I mentioned earlier. Um, we are funded by national sponsors. Our biggest is uh, Wells Fargo uh, through their philanthropic uh, foundation. And then we have other organizations like uh, uh, companies like PG&E, or law firms and, and accounting firms and others even um, uh, through the California Energy Commission as well. Uh, we, we rely on that uh, funding to, to run the program for sure. So I just have another one or two more slides. I wanted to show kind of the, the program timeline. Uh, we're in this early phase of, or we're in this phase of outreach where we're recruiting companies for the program and the deadline to apply is on April 17th. We then um, send out acceptances on May 6th, and the program launches the 1st of June with the National Academy. And uh, in past years, the National Academy would be in person, one event in the East Coast, one on the West Coast, but uh, we actually have had great success doing it virtually. So that's good. it's gonna continue here this year. And then that's the beginning of June that it kicks off the 12 weeks of acceleration with the deliverables due at the end of August. And then in September, we have our regional competition phase where companies pitch, they can win cash prizes, uh, they win glory. And then it all culminates in the global forum in uh, the end of, end of October. The global forum, we like to call kind of the Academy Awards of clean tech. We have companies from all around the world that participate. We actually also run programs in other countries and they, we invite those companies to come to uh, this year, it'll be in San Jose and in person. And it's an opportunity to compete, connect, uh, gain visibility, do showcasing. And uh, really, again, it's a, it's, a, it's a way for entrepreneurs to build their network and get, get the exposure they need. Finally, I'm gonna just mention that there is an application fee. Um, you don't have to pay that until you fill out the whole application. And, and we wanna, what I would suggest to company entrepreneurs out there is, just go to our website, begin an application, make sure that your contact info gets in there. And then one of us, Ryan, um, myself, one of our recruiting team will reach out to you and talk to you because we really want to make sure that you are going to get the best out of Cleantech Open and for participating before you even pay the application fee. I mean, you know, we're not trying to, we're not making money off of this. We do have a participation fee if you're accepted and go through the program. And that participation fee pays less than 25% of the actual cost of this program and um, covers the academy, the whole acceleration program, the, the cash awards, the global forum event. Um, and the cool thing is in 2022, at least, there's no travel necessary to participate. And then finally, I'll just mention that we are also looking for international companies. Um, out of a cohort of 120, about 20 of them will be non-US startups and they participate in the full cohort. And it's really companies, international companies that are looking to do business in America. And um, so, you know, I, I don't know if anybody on, on the line right now is from outside the United States, but we're very open to it. And, uh, um, and it's a great way to do customer discovery and learn about uh, the market in the, in the States. So finally, I would encourage entrepreneurs to apply, um, reach out to us or start an application some people out there, some of you may be a potential mentor or investor or sponsor. If you go to our website, there's a, there's a link on to get involved and you can see we are always looking for mentors. We have, ooh, I want to say about over 500 mentors in, Calif in the West Coast and they don't all get matched every year, but those that are not matched to a company are uh, participate by being clinic coaches or mock judges or even doing the finals judging. So we, we love to involve our mentors uh, in, uh, in any, any way that they're, that they're available. So with that, Thomas, I will stop sharing. I'll hand it back to you. And I'm happy to take uh, any questions from the audience or, or answer other questions.